change. Well, the World Health Organization and Africa for Disease Control and Prevention have uh, warned that uh, countries should not uh, be complacent with the record low COVID-19 infection numbers. WHO Sub-Saharan uh, Director Dr. Masiriso Mwedi and uh, Africa CDC Director for uh, Dr. John Ngekasong are also commend commended uh, the United States of America for donating vaccine doses to Africa. We're now joined by Meseret Shibesi, who is a medical officer at the WHO Intercountry Support Team for East and Southern Africa. Uh, thanks so very much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Mr. Rich, you know, we heard, uh, of course, one of our leading stories uh, this afternoon. In fact, um, President Cyril Ramaphosa saying that, you know, he's very happy with South Africa's uh, vaccination drive and how far we're going in terms of the vaccination process. Uh, let's talk about the continent in general. Is, is Africa's vaccination campaign uh, really uh, on track? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, we can say that uh, we've not been progressing much as we want to because of supply issues, mm. very limited supply. This is because our main uh, aim was to get the vaccine, AstraZeneca, majority of our countries having that from the Serum Institute of India. India, uh, you know, that uh, increased cases of COVID-19, then that has really drawn back the supply. In addition, wealthy countries also accumulating several vaccine doses, yeah. which was not anticipated. So that has also limited our supply. However, the COVAX facility, the African Union is working together. And hopefully we believe that by, by end of uh, the year, we would really go back to drive where we want to be. Yeah. Uh, because we'll get the supply. Thank you. I mean, you look at a, you know, it's difficult for me to understand how, you know, a big continent like Africa uh, would not be able to, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, manufacture uh, their own vaccines. I mean, what, what is the issue there? And is that, is that something that, you know, is uh, being widely spoken about? I know that in South Africa there's been some talk about it. Um, but, you know, one wonders, you know, this, this over-reliance. Is, is there no talk of us just, you know, manufacturing our own? Thanks again. This is very pertinent. It's been advocated highly. We have the African Vaccine Manufacturing Agency. There is a movement since early 2000. But I think COVID is giving us the opportunity to push forward this agenda. Uh, President uh, of South Africa, President of uh, Senegal and also Rwanda mm -hmm. are spearheading and to have the, the recent experience of South Africa where probably, you know, uh, uh, patent sharing could be there to manufacture. We start with packaging and filling, but definitely technology transfer is going to come yeah. so that Africa would be really, yeah, that is the, the, the plan. Thank yeah. you. You, you. You spoke earlier, you know, we started our conversation, you said that, uh, you know, it seems that, you know, if we look at the continent in Africa, uh, that we're not, you know, progressing much when it comes to uh, the vaccination drives. And I just wonder if you, if we are to kind of be specific, um, and I mean, I mentioned that President Sir Lama Posa says he's happy with what's happening in South Africa when it comes to vaccines. Which countries on the continent are sort of, you know, for want of a better term, are performing well, uh, you know, when it comes to, to vaccinating? Okay, thank you for this. Uh, it, it, South Africa has been, for example, the last one week, South Africa, Egypt, Mauritius, Zimbabwe, uh, Tunisia, Sudan, Comoros are, have been in the driving seat for the last one week, having registered the number, higher number of vaccinated population. Mm -hmm. This uh, varies week by week as countries receive new doses of supply because they have to catch up and use the, or consume the doses that they are receiving. But we must say that the, the drive is being monitored very well. Yeah. And we, we're happy about it, but only the supply if we could get it on time. Yeah. Uh, because the rest of our countries have extensive experience of new vaccine introduction, but the supply has been the biggest challenge that our countries are facing. Yeah. If we continue at the pace that, uh, you know, we are at at the moment, I mean, how, how long... Uh, do you suppose that it will it will take for for the continent to achieve you know what's been termed uh, herd immunity? Are we so are we too far off to even be discussing 
uh, the issue of herd immunity. I mean, when you're talking about uh, the fact that we have problems with supply, for example, one wonders if we will get to that point of, of herd immunity that we've now heard so much of. Thank you. Uh, you know, if we translate the, the herd immunity, which we think 65 to 85% of our priority groups have to be vaccinated in each country, we will need translated to doses. It will uh, be around 1.94 billion doses. Yeah. And to get this at this current pace, it will take up until 2023. However, the donations from the uh, wealthy countries, the COVAX facility, the African Union modalities of acquiring vaccines for those who can pay up front, all these mechanisms, the World Bank sample, I think it will take us, maybe we can hit the target by end 2022. But if the supply is constrained, then it has to stretch forward. But then let's come to herd immunity. At the moment, we are not even talking about that because our priority is protecting our population from severe illnesses and prevent, preventing them from deaths yeah. by targeting priority groups and giving them the required doses. So that is the approach we have taken. I mean, are they, and, and this is really um, just to wrap up our conversation, because obviously this is quite important um, for all of us, and, 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 you know, just more information is always so essential for us in terms of, you know, are there at this time, you know, any indications um, about which vaccines are perhaps more, more effective uh, and, 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 and perhaps in which, which, which countries? You know, there's obviously different variants in different uh, countries, and one wonders, you know, maybe one vaccine is great for, you know, South Africa might not be so great uh, in, in, in Zimbabwe. And I wonder if that's something that's really kind of seriously uh, looked into. Uh, yes, we do. We, yes, we do. Uh, and then uh, the numerous types of vaccines are being introduced in the different countries. However, we are also challenged with the emerging uh, concerns of, of variants. But the good news is that both the AstraZeneca that has been widely used in Africa and also the Pfizer, through different studies, what we have come across is that they are effective against the severe diseases. Even if we get the, the variants that we are scared of, the Delta, uh, uh, studies have proven them that AstraZeneca as well as Pfizer work very well against severe diseases, against uh, mortality as well. So uh, I think we should not be scared. The, mo the most important uh, uh, drive should be to make sure that we provide the vaccines to the uh, priority risk groups. And with the targets, we are hoping in the African region by end September to vaccinate at least 10% of our priority groups with the two doses or the, the full dose series as it applies. And also by end December, 30 to 40% to reach. And if we get the supplies that we are working on, it is achievable. Mm -hmm. And we should always remember COVID-19 will not be prevented only by vaccine, but also adhering to measures of infection prevention and control that we are aware of. The social distancing, the use of masks, even if we have the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ray, it's a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you uh, indeed for uh, giving us your time and the work that uh, you're doing on the continent. M many thanks. Thank you so much for having us.